Thank you.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Merry Christmas. Amen. This is a great, joyful celebration. It's sometimes, in some countries, they call it Little Christmas. It's a great celebration in some places. The great um, day when the three wise men came from the East, the Gentiles, from the nations, from other countries, the foreigners. Uh, acknowledged and recognized Jesus, the King of the Jews, and the Messiah, the Lord. We uh, joyfully celebrate, and um, in our nativity scene, obviously, the kings have arrived. It rained so much this year that they had to ford a stream, it looks like, though, uh, and uh, had to park the camel on the other side of the river. Uh, but joyfully, we celebrate uh, the coming of uh, the nations to belief in Jesus Christ. Begin this Mass by asking forgiveness for our lack of faith, for our lack of going like the Magi did, following the star to, um, um, to truly show our faith. Let's ask His mercy so that we can worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, you're sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
One God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds covers the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the, of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Rescue the poor when he cries out, 
and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor, the lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to the people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, and that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the Gospel. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word 
that I too may go and do him homage. <clears throat> After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> the Magi knew a lot. These three wise men were wise, and they had done their homework, and they had studied. They had studied uh, the writings of perhaps many religions, and they had um, learned about the um, prophecies of Israel and so they when the star appeared they knew and they followed and they went and they got there and they asked where is the newborn king of the Jews they already knew a lot in fact they brought um, three gifts gold frankincense and myrrh three things that um, were symbolic you know for a king for a priest, incense was used for priests and for God, that Jesus, that Jesus would be, the child would be divine and a, and a high priest like Jesus. And then um, myrrh, which was used to anoint um, dead bodies to, for embalming so, so that this child would be somehow a victim to offer himself. And, and so these magi, they knew a lot. They, uh, um, and so you might say that, um, you know, the, the, the three Magi or the three kings, they're, they're often thought of as, you know, representatives of us. You know, the Gentiles, the nations, the people from California, people from other places, people who aren't Jewish, not part of the nation, the, the chosen race of Israel, you know, non-Jews, uh, that they represent that. But, you know, we might think that they also kind of represent maybe, maybe converts, you know. You ever met a convert to Catholicism, someone who was Protestant and and you know made the leap uh, jumped the Tiber and came to become Catholic uh, if, you're, if you've met someone like that they're always on fire you know it's a big sacrifice to leave the religion of your own family to join another religion and they really are people who really believe it and they understand um, and they're excited they're on fire converts are sometimes the best Catholics you know and they put us to shame us cradle Catholics sometimes. They're not, you know, they're really excited. They really believe in the Eucharist. They can't wait, you know, to, to receive their first communion. And they, and they start to become people who go to Mass maybe every day. And they really believe it, right? This, uh, tomorrow and for three days, we're, myself and Father Matthew and Father Joe, the three priests, we're going to go on a conference, um, uh, about, uh, a priest conference. And it's put on by uh, the Augustan Institute and uh, uh, Scott Hahn, and um, uh, uh, John Bergsma, some of these great Bible experts who were Protestant uh, pastors who, who converted to Catholicism. And they're so, it's amazing how excited they are that the Bible is a Catholic book and all of it has, all, even the Old Testament has so many prophecies about um, the, the sacraments and uh, the Catholic things. And so it's something that we should get excited about. And so that's a good New Year's resolution, right? To try to get excited once again about our religion. And the three magi, you know, from, from the East, they were pagans, they were Gentiles, or not. They, were, they converted, right, didn't they, to, Jerusalem, to, to, to Judaism. They, they started to believe in this new uh, religion. And they knew a lot. They came and they, they knew about the child, what kind of a Messiah he would be. And they also knew a lot about uh, when, right? 
Um, they knew things. Uh, even the king of, they knew even more than the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem. The king and his, you know, they, you know, they were surprised. They were amazed that, you know, the, these, these three kings came. And the three kings knew when. And even, you know, the king asked them, when did the star appear? When? Right? So, so the kings were big on, they were good with, they knew the who and the when, who, what kind of, who would be born and, and when, but they weren't quite exactly clear on where, right? The where. And so uh, they asked, they came, where is the newborn king of the Jews? Uh, where was he born? And, and so the king asked his experts in the Old Testament scriptures of Israel, and they came back with the answer. They said, Bethlehem. It says right here you know, that the, the, the Messiah would, be, would come from Bethlehem. And so there are prophecies, these prophecies. Um, um, and, um, and so I'd like to just say in my homily today that it is possible. You know, it's, it's amazing to, to look at, to study the Bible, the Old Testament, and to see these prophecies these predictions. The Old Testament, you know, has all the information about Jesus and, uh, and the Jewish people, it's kind of a hostile witness. They don't believe in Jesus, but they believe in the Old Testament and they preserved it all these centuries. And, but if you really look at it, you see that it all predicts the mystery of Jesus Christ. You know, Confucius or Buddha or Muhammad, none of, no other religious figure was predicted beforehand. But Jesus Christ, for centuries, many, many prophecies about who he would be and what it would be like. Um, you know, there's a great book by a great scientist and mathematician and inventor, Blaise Pascal. He's universally acknowledged as a, as a genius, a great mind. And he has a little book called Pensées, which means thoughts in French. Pensées. And he has proofs why you should believe in God. Here's this great genius. And... Uh, and half of the book is all about the Old Testament predictions. The Old Testament, if, if you just look at it, you see, of course it's true, because how could it be all be predicted? How could it be prophesied? Uh, it's obvious, you know, it's, it's a proof, right? And then he has in that book a little thing called the wager, because basically it says it's a good bet to believe, you know? I mean, if you're wrong, it's still a good life to be a believer. Uh, but if you're right, you get heaven, right? The wager is called, you know, Pascal's wager, right? So, so it's a good bet to believe, and uh, and and it's also I think it's interesting to really see that it, there's proof of prophecies. Another proof is 19, 1947. 1947, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in Qumran. and these ancient documents really show an amazing way. And in the next couple of years, I want to talk about that a lot more. We'll have a whole year dedicated to this amazing thing, the Essenes. But they really, they really had it down as to when. They really knew that they really were expecting the Messiah to come during that time, exactly when Jesus came. In fact, some of them lived in the desert directly east. They had a tradition that the Messiah would come from the east. They lived out in the desert, celibate males living in a monastery, because they really believed it was going to happen soon. So it is possible, uh, prophecies are possible. Last month we learned about Our Lady of Guadalupe. And uh, you know the Aztecs, nine million Aztecs surrendered their whole empire to a couple of boatloads of Spanish uh, um, uh, conquistadores. Why? Because Montezuma and his uh, daughter and his, grand, his, his father had had dreams and visions of, you know, that, that uh, people would come from across the ocean uh, bringing the true religion. So the, they, even the Aztecs, even their calendar was predicting a new age, the, the Aztec calendar. So, so prophecy is possible. You know, these miraculous things are possible. Another thing that's possible, some people say it's impossible that, you know, the kings from the East would, you know, that kings, the great kings of the world wouldn't know or care about a little baby being born in a little village in Israel. That it's impossible, probably just made up, right, they, they say. But we know, we know that the king of the world, the emperor of Rome, declared a census. And that was the only way that Jesus could have been born in Bethlehem. 
Because of the census, they had to go to Bethlehem. He was born in Bethlehem. So you can see that God was controlling the kings of the earth for the sake of this little baby that Jesus would be born in that little town of Bethlehem, which means house of bread. He'd be the, 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 uh, the king and the bread from heaven. And, uh, and then, so when he was born, and then when he died, when he was on the cross, there was a little sign above his head that said, you know, the king of the Jews, Inri, the Jesus Nazarene king of the Jews. And it was put there by Pilate, kind of a joke, you know, that he is the king of the Jews. But he was the representative of the emperor of Rome. And so it's like the Roman Empire officially acknowledged, without even knowing it, that this was the king of the Jews, the Messiah that was expected. So the kings of the world, you know, were involved. They did know, or they did, you know, even unknowingly, they, they, uh, they had to acknowledge, and they were um, acknowledging the, the birth and death of the Messiah. And some people say, how could it be possible that a star could detach itself from the sky and, and, you know, that a few kings would be able to follow it and it would stop over the place of the baby's birth? Well, how could that be possible? Well, I've got proof for that too. Uh, 1917, right? Our Lady of Fatima heard the story. Mary appeared to the three children and, and she predicted that a great miracle would happen in October and 70,000 people came and saw it and people from other villages nearby also saw it, that the sun, the, the rain clouds parted and the sun started to dance and, and, and in the sky. And they could look at it without harm and it started to almost feel like it falling to the sky. It seemed to detach it. And you know, the sun is our star, it's a star. So how is it possible that, that they saw it but the, whole, the rest of the world didn't see it? God's got skills, <laughs> right? God can do that. Could God do that? We have proof. God did do that. God can do that. And so we have faith. So during this new year, let's make some New Year's resolutions. I have a few New Year's resolutions. One is to become a saint. Okay. The other one is to get up earlier and do my prayers first, even during the day, to pray first and then do my other things. But the other thing is to educate and to make, you know, to help all of us to be excited about our faith. I usually do it by photocopies. You see photocopies, right? Uh, but we're also going to have, you know, adult education things to learn more about the wonderful miraculous prophecies. Of, um, so that like the three kings, we can be guided, you know, by faith to, the, to, the, to Jesus Christ. And that we can then share that good news with the world. Let us stand and offer our prayers. Let us proclaim together our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and men, for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great confidence in the power of God to help us in our needs, we present to him all our prayers. That the leaders of the church will reveal Christ through their lives of simplicity and service, 
and that committed young people will answer God's call to vocations in the church. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord. that heads of governments will reveal Christ through their assistance to exiles and refugees. We pray to the Lord, Lord, that all of us who gather here will reveal Christ through our renewed commitment to our parish. We pray to the Lord, Lord in our that those in need of healing will reveal Christ through their patience and trust. We pray to the Lord, Lord in our that all those who have died, including Elmer Molini, will share in Christ's resurrection. We also pray for the recently deceased and victims of the coronavirus and natural disasters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Loving Father, hear the prayers of your children, which we offer in the name of Jesus, who was born as our brother but, and died for us, but rose again and lives forever and ever. Amen. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared, in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelian, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son our Lord we your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have, that you have given us this pure victim this holy victim this spotless victim the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, <clears throat> a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Today's feast is all about revealing or showing the epiphany of Jesus and who he is. During this coming year, we're going to be focusing on that. Um, the theme this year will be Join Us on the Way to Salvation. And we're going to have on Monday nights a special series for adults uh, beginning not tomorrow, but the following Monday, the 10th of January. Every Monday night at 6, 6 to 7.30, um, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. So a lot of learning about the Bible and about the church teachings and about Jesus Christ and who he is for us and uh, his salvation in the church. And so uh, we, um, myself and Father Joe Maganai and um, uh, Taylor Barrett, our new Director of Religious Education, as well as uh, other staff members are gonna be giving these presentations and videos from the Augustine Institute Wonderful um, presentations by um, these um, great scholars, experts on the Bible. So please join us. Uh, there's information in the bulletin about that. And also in the bulletin, information about things in January, like the Walk for Life, which is Saturday the 22nd. We're going to try to fill up two buses, so next week we'll have sign-ups for that. Um, then we have um, a play coming to our parish. The 26th of Wednesday, the 26th, will be Tolton from Slave to Priest, the amazing life of Venerable uh, Augustus Tolton, the first black priest in our country. And then a marriage course, uh, kind of in a marriage enrichment uh, series that's uh, and you can mention in the book about all these things and on our website. The ministry center will be closed um, until Tuesday, uh, the 4th. And uh, today's second question is for the Latin America Church of Latin America. So we'll be generous and the second master at the end of that today. Next week we'll have a second question for building and maintenance for the upkeep of our parish grounds. Also, the Knights of Columbus after Mass are selling tickets for the crab feed, which is one of our big annual events here. So um, you can support them and uh, the make nice gifts, these tickets for the crab feed uh, dinner. So let us also, at the back of the church, I've got some papers to learn about the faith, and one of them is about the three saints uh, who are from, who lived in America, in this country. So it is possible to become a saint. So anyway, the 4th, 5th, and 6th of January are the feasts of Elizabeth Ann Seton, the first American saint, um, um, St. John Newman, who was an American bishop in Philadelphia, and um, Andre Bessette, who was uh, uh, a great miracle worker who lived in New York for a time. So um, you can take a paper at the doors of the church about those wonderful saints. So stand and ask for God's blessing. <laughs> Please respond by saying amen to each of the three prayers of the final blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you, and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. <laughs> and since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. And so, when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to Him, whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord.